I would like to welcome you all today on our presentation. Chess and Thomas. Dr. Alexander Thomas was born in 1914 and graduated from City College in 1932 at NYU College of Medicine in 1936. In 1938, he married Stella Chess, who he met at NYU. Thomas completed his medical training at Bellevue Psychiatric Hospital and joined the faculty at NYU in 1948. Throughout their professional careers, the couple worked together as researchers, clinicians and parents. Alexander Thomas died in Manhattan in 2003, aged 89 years. She received her medical degree in 1939 from New York University. In 1970, she became a professor of child psychiatry at NYU. She died in 2007 at the age of 93. Parents do not become believers of temperament until after the birth of their second child. Before this, the child's behaviour may have been seen as a direct outcome of their upbringing, either a tribute to or a fault of the parents. The modern understanding that children make important contributions to their social interactions has its roots. In the temperament study undertaken by Chess and Thomas in 1963, the New York Longitudinal Study, the results of this study rejected the previously held beliefs that suggested parents were responsible for their children's problems. Instead, they demonstrated that temperament is biologically based affected by hereditary, neural and hormonal factors and can be influenced by elements such as parental response. Chess and Thomas identified three temperament dimensions apparent at various ages, two months, two years, ten years. The following clips will outline these nine behaviours used to identify these temperaments. Rhythmicity. Here you will see the regular and irregular patterns of the child. First, you see how the child has a regular pattern and always has a snack before bedtime. Then the irregular, when the child falls asleep at different times every night. Come on, Kriya, time for bed. But I don't want to go to bed, Mum. I'm not tired. I know, but you're school in the morning, so we have to go to bed. Good girl. But, Good night. I'm not tired. Good girl. Good night. Try and go to sleep. Come on, it's time for bed. I just want to get my snack, Daddy. Okay. It's time for bed after that, okay? Yeah. Come on, Kriya, time for bed. Okay. Good night, pet. Distractibility. Here, this clip shows that the child needs absolute silence in order to do homework. Then we will see the child can read a book at high volume.
is that? A bowl of mayonnaise. For what? I read online that soaking your face in mayonnaise for 10 minutes a day makes it go prettier. Corey, it's back. Attention span and persistence. The child's ability to continue with an activity in the face of obstacles or problems. Some children are more easily discouraged by difficulties than others. In the first clip, we see a child with a long attention span, working on a puzzle until it is complete. In the second clip, we see a child leaving their homework frequently to get a snack. How are you getting on, kid? Hmm? Good. How are you getting on, kid? Lynn? Finished? Um, yeah. Well done. Intensity of reaction. The child's response to people or events. Some children react strongly and loudly to even minor events, while others are less demonstrative or openly emotional. In the first clip, we see a child having an intense reaction by tearing up her homework because she made one mistake. In the second clip, we see a child having a mild reaction when another child hits her. She seems surprised but doesn't hit back. Threshold of responsiveness. The child's level of sensitivity to such physical stimuli as sounds, smells or lights. For example, some children are easily startled by sudden noises while others are less sensitive to them. Some children are often pickier about foods than others.
In the first clip, we see a child with a low threshold of responsiveness running to the door to greet her father coming home. In the second clip, we see a child with a high threshold of responsiveness, not complaining even though she is sick. This is the child's overall worldview and can be positive or negative. Some children tend to focus on the negative aspects of a situation while others focus on the positive aspects. In the first clip we see a child with a positive mood laughing and playing with her siblings. In the second clip, we see a child with a negative mood, becoming frustrated and crying because she can't do her homework. Adaptability. The child's ability and pace in adjusting to changes in schedules or transitions from one activity to another. In this first clip, we see an adaptive child happily heading off to his grandparents' house for a week. In this second clip, we see a child who is non-adaptive. She is becoming upset with having her hair brushed. It hurts, Mama. Stop. Um... Approach withdrawal. There are both positive and ne negative aspects of this. On the positive, here we can see the child happy going out the door to school. And on the negative, here we see the child clinging to the door to the mother, refusing to go to school. This clip will demonstrate the activity level. Firstly, we'll show the high activity level. In this clip, you will see the child plays with the ball, cannot sit still long enough to do his homework. Secondly, you will see the low activity level. Here you will see how the child enjoys quiet play, sits 
to do a puzzle. Craig Homer. Homer. What are you doing, Caitlin? The results of this study established three types of temperament. The easy baby which was 40%. This baby adjusts easily to new situations, quickly establishes routines and is in general cheerful and easy to calm. The difficult baby which is 10% is slow to adjust to new experiences and is likely to react negatively and intensely to stimuli and events. The slow to warm up baby is 15%. This baby can be difficult at first but will become easier over time and repeated exposure. Goodness of fit is simply defined as the compatibility between the environment and a child's temperament. It was a term first used by Chess and Thomas to describe the importance of children's interaction with their environment, as well as their basic temperament in understanding their later growth and development. Poorness to fit occurs when temperament is not respected and accommodated. Children are more likely to reach their full potential when there is a goodness of fit. Most experts agree that temperament has a genetic and biological basis. However, environmental factors modify the ways a child's personality is expressed. Understanding a child's temperament can help reform how parents interpret children's behaviour and think about reasons for behaviours. This knowledge will help them to guide their child in ways that respect the individuality of the child, to work with them rather than try to change them. Knowing what may affect a child's behaviour can help alleviate potential problems. Later studies by Chess and Thomas highlighted that the characteristics observed in childhood continue to influence behaviour and adjustment throughout the entire lifespan.